Sega Saturn is a console I had zero experience with. None of my friends had it growing up and for the longest time I didn't even know it was a thing. Now I finally get to play it so I grabbed a handful of games. So let's go over the rules. Only one game per franchise, spin-offs uh, count as something different or if it's in a different genre it counts as something different even if it's in the same franchise. I'm trying to play each game 15 minutes and then I can play more if I want to. I'm including my review of Nights Into Dreams here because it's a Sega Saturn game and my review is short enough that it fits better here than as its own thing. And these are my top 10. Not a top 10 that's best for everyone, my top 10. At the end I'll pick 10 games from this list uh, and they will be added to my top 10 games overall and one day I'll make a video where I have my top 10 games from all my little top 10 lists. Alien Trilogy is sort of like Doom, but in the Alien universe. It's not a bad first person shooter and I kind of like the sprites. It's definitely worth a try. Clockwork Knight. My friend grew up with this one, so I had to check it out. It honestly reminds me of a Toy Story game from like an alternate universe. It also has a bit more puzzle to it, uh, as your key can change some of the landscape. Overall, I felt like it was pretty mediocre, uh, but it's like really weird and bizarre, especially in the opening cutscene. Clockwork Night 2 is more of the same, but they use a few tricks to make it feel not as 2D. I again enjoy the visuals, but the gameplay just isn't for me. It's only okay. D is a game where your father has went on a murderous rampage, killing people in a hospital. The police have surrounded him, and you play as his daughter. They let you inside for some reason. And upon going in, you find lots of dead bodies. And a magical portal that teleports you inside the castle. Once in the castle, it's like the opposite of an escape room. Rather than solving puzzles to escape, you are solving puzzles to go further and further into the castle. The game controls sort of like a track. You hit the direction you want to go, and it moves you a predetermined amount of spaces in the area of that direction. Moving, solving puzzles, and interacting with objects are the main things you do in this game, and despite it barely being gameplay, it's honestly pretty scary. The horror is ahead of its time, and you never know when you might die. The CG is not really good, but in some way it kind of adds to the scariness of it. Something about bad CG can actually make the thing creepier. D is fucking intense and has enough scares that it's never boring. I ended up watching someone play through it because I'm not really a puzzle guy. But I was way too hooked on this game to not continue to know. 
Unfortunately, I wasn't like really into the ending, but still, overall, it's such a good game. Die Hard Arcade. What the fuck was going on with Die Hard at this time, and why were there so many Die Hard games being made? This one's a 3D beat em up with a lot of flair. It's alright, I for sure played better beat em ups, but I still had a good time with this one. Golden Axe The Duel. A Golden Axe fighting game? Of course I'm interested. But I'll be honest though, I don't know who some of these characters are. There's only like a couple characters. Uh, from the games that are here. I was excited to play as Death Adder, uh, but sadly this game, not very good. I for sure expected better. I won't be coming back to it, but maybe there's a reason this one's exclusive. Guardian Heroes. This is a beat-em-up with a leveling system. It has a mechanic where you hop on different planes of the field which I thought was cool till I remembered how many games I could do that without really hopping and then I realized it's not that great of a gimmick. It also felt slow compared to others in its genre, but maybe your character gets faster after enough levels. I know people who love this one, so I was disappointed to not have loved this one. House of the Dead. I've never been into rail shooters, but House of the Dead fucking changed my mind. This game is a blast. I love all the decisions you make during it, like which uh, zombie to shoot first, which, and if you could save a person or not, it's really fucking cool. And I feel like my failures really matter because the people will die if I fail to save them. Like I get different animations based on if I do save them or not. It also just packs so much excitement and so much goofy dialogue, I'm always wanting to continue to see what could come next. Legend of Oasis is the sequel to Beyond Oasis, and while it's very similar, I just had a harder time getting into this one. It starts a lot slower in my opinion. Lunacy is a really weird game, in fact, all of these Sega Saturn games have been kinda weird. Like Nintendo was over there doing Mario 64 and Banjo-Kazooie Ocarina of Time, and Sega's over here with like games like D or... Uh, that Clockwork Knights, or this one, Lunacy, proving that Sega does what Nintendo don't. Why am I here? What's going on? Welcome to the illustrious Misty Town Jail, stranger. You're not from around these parts, are you? No. I am not. The name that they call me is Fred. They call you... Fred? What is your real name? I... can't seem to remember any other. I have no memory. I lost my memory four years ago. Mm, that's a tough break. I'll call you... Fred. Uh, in this instance, I'm not sure how I feel about that. <laughs> As the Genesis, the goal was to be, like, more cool and mature than Nintendo. But with the Saturn, I feel like they stopped competing and just did drugs. You think you'll fare better out there than in here? Is that what you think? What do you think? Mm, I think it's all the same. What's that? It's what you're wishing for. It's the key to the cell, Traveler. Anthony, who are you? Like I told you, I'm the regular. This one's sort of like D in that each tap makes you move to a new spot. The visuals are better, but also still not great. Now, I actually really love this one, too. Everyone speaks weirdly and cryptically, and something always feels off about it. 
It gave me Silent Hill vibes or some sort of purgatory. Even the town you explore is mostly just empty and just bizarre when you talk to people. Hey, where's the young dude, huh? Well, I guess he isn't here, is he? Damn. If it kept this up, I would have loved it, but it can honestly be too silly in some parts, and honestly, like D, the second half of the game was far worse to me than the first. But it's still super worth playing, it's so cryptic and uneasy feeling, and I just couldn't get over it. Also the main villain's last name is Gordon, same as me. Good morning. I is it morning? What does it matter? I'm the infamous Lord Gordon. Unlike D though, this one can be too silly, both when it tries and also unintentionally. This whole console, and especially this game, feels like a fever dream. Fred, I'm the Traveler. A Traveler, eh? I am Dr. Morse, and I don't have any use for Travelers. I'm Lord Gordon's personal physician, so I don't take appointments. Nights into Dreams is the game on the Sega Saturn I hear the most about. What other games even get talked about on the Sega Saturn? Almost none. But this one, this one gets talked about. It was advertised on Sonic Adventure and it got a re-release. So I'm playing it on the Xbox One. It does come with the classic version though, which is the same game but in a 4x3 ratio with a bit of ugly textures. So I will be playing the 16x19 ratio version re-release uh, as it looks prettier and fits my TV. The story involves a girl who is having nightmares of being laughed at in an audition and a boy who's playing basketball when he suddenly gets the ball stolen from him and this upsets him. I guess. But that's how basketball is is played. Did he just expect... Anyway. <laughs> Doesn't matter. They enter the dream world where they can become an androgynous character named Knights. As the kids, you can run around this 3D world, but you can't really do much. The game is designed for Knights. But, as Knights, the game is no longer 3D, but still looks like it. It's now more of a 2.5D where you're kind of on rails. In the game, you fly through rings, and the better you do, the more points you collect. Once you break a bubble and head back to the beginning, you move to the next stage. And is this all you do? Yep. I for sure expected more than flying through rings, but that is all this game is. Isn't that why we hate Superman 64? Well, I guess we also hate that game because the controls are bad. But in Nights, you fly through rings and the controls are good. <laughs> but, like, that's it. I guess I expected more. If flying through rings sounds fun to you, this game will be your jam. But as for me, I, I just wasn't fond of the gameplay. Also, you are watching me, and I kind of suck. But watching someone who's really good at this game can be just very relaxing and enjoyable to do. I do like how the game looks and I've learned the soundtrack is really good for sleeping as every time I played the game Ashley just fell asleep and I would have to leave the main menu on for her to sleep too. Also there are boss fights in this game that are all right. I feel like the amount of times I face through a boss is a little too much, so it needs some work, but they're all right. The ending cutscenes involve each kid overcoming their fears and anxieties. How did flying through rings in their dreams fix this issue? I, I don't fucking know, but sometimes I just need a good night's sleep to get over my shit too. The game also includes Christmas Nights into Dreams, which is something Sega Genesis fans uh, got from Sega back then for free. So that around Christmas time, so that was that was cool. Christmas Nights is the same game but with a Christmas skin, and can honestly be a different skin depending on the holiday. 
Unfortunately, the Christmas music drives me mad, but it is still a cool addition to the game. If this looks like your thing, give it a try. I know a lot of people love this game. But as for me, this, this wasn't quite my thing. Panzer Dragoon is a big deal, but again, I'm not into rail shooters, so I didn't want to try it. However, after House of the Dead, which I loved, I'm down. I'm down to try rail shooters. Clearly, I've been missing out. This one, though, was not for me. It kind of reminded me of the tornado scenes from Sonic Adventure, and I hope to not have to revisit that. It's not bad, just not my thing at all. Shining Force 3, I honestly really like how this looks, and it's a worthy successor to the Shining Force games. I uh, had a harder time getting into this one, but it still looks and plays really well. I'd love to see a collection of Shining Force released someday. It's, it's Shining Force with like a higher presentation. It, you can't go wrong with it. Shinobi Legions. This one is very different from previous Shinobis in that it can be a lot more sword focused and a lot less uh, Shoryuken focused. Its visual style has changed to a style closer to Mortal Kombat and honestly I thought I wouldn't like these changes but I was wrong. This game is great. I love slicing enemies in half and blocking with your sword. Has to be the coolest addition. I honestly really love this one. Also, there's FMV cutscenes, which do come off as cheesy, but I still enjoy them, and they aren't as jarring because of the gameplay's visual style. Sonic Jam. This one doesn't count because it's a compilation disc of old Sonic games. Sega never made a mainline Sonic game for the Saturn. They did try, but each time they canceled it for not quite meeting standards. And with the N64 and PlayStation blasting out hit after hit and the Sega Saturn failing while putting out Fever Dream after Fever Dream, uh, and the Saturn just not being powerful enough for the hardware, they decided that their next console, the Dreamcast, were, would be where the big Sonic game would be. Now, Sonic Jam is a game compilation, but within it is this little thing called Sonic World where you can play this 3D content that was going to be how their 3D Sonic game would have been. Or at least one of them. They had, they had multiple versions. I want to say there's one called Sonic Extreme as well. That just looks like a fish-eyed mess. But this one is actually playable. You can actually go ahead and play this thing. Um... Most of the time when a game is scrapped, it's gone for good, so it's really cool Sega would save this little chunk of unfinishedness for us to play. Overall, it's pretty bare bones and empty, uh, not a lot to do in it, and control-wise, it was pretty... eh? I do like the visual style, though, but I... I for sure like the Dreamcast style better. Again, this doesn't count, because it's not really a full game, I just thought it would be cool to show off. Uh, let's see. Now, Sonic R is the Sonic game we got for the Saturn. It's not a mainline Sonic game, and it's just super weird. It's a racing game, I assume, to compete with Mario Kart. But it's really bad and does not nearly have enough content. And despite that you're running, it sure doesn't control like that. I don't even know how to describe the controls, but it's bad. So slippery and unprecise. The more I played, the more I got used to it and I got better, but oh my god, I was so bad in the beginning. And I can't ever say I got good. I just, I, I honestly hated this game. I went in expecting to like it. I didn't. <laughs> uh, on the good side, there's a lot of shortcuts you can take once you know the map. Uh, but holy shit, starting each map feels awful and it's not till you've played it multiple times that it feels better. Also, the music choice for this game is extra weird. I feel like I can show it, though, because it's Sega. So let me try a snippet, and hopefully it won't get muted like a Nintendo video would. Ready 
Virtua Cop is another on-rail shooter. It was alright, uh, not my cup of tea. I did like having to make sure you don't shoot civilians. Virtua Cop 2 was so much better. With this game and with House of the Dead, I, I really do feel like I've been missing out on a whole ass genre. It's exciting and I'm always wondering what's coming next. I also feel like the gameplay is slightly better and the whole don't shoot civilians thing really adds a, a lot of focus and decision making to the game. It's pretty good. Virtua Fighter 2 is Sega's competitor to Tekken. Honestly, it's pretty good, but I'd still take Tekken over it. Uh, but still, if you owned a Saturn, this was going to be one of your main fighting games. X-Men Children of the Atom is an X-Men fighting game with mainline characters and some unknown characters. Well, not, uh, not unknown, just lesser known, I mean. It's fun and plays a lot like Marvel vs. Capcom or the Marvel vs. Street Fighter series. Honestly, Capcom made a ton of games like this. Last off, we have X-Men vs. Street Fighter. Told you they made a ton of games like this. Uh, this is one I believe I've played in arcades. It's a tag team fighter and it's super close to the arcade from what I remember. I honestly don't rem notice any differences. Whereas on the PlayStation 1, if I remember correctly, you couldn't switch out your tag team, which was really weird, because you still chose two people. It was stupid. Anyway, this is a fun one I'm not good at. Alright, let's go ahead and pick my top 10. Hello guys, I got 22 items. Let me get this down to 10. So, here we go. Sure, I'll get rid of that. I'll get rid of Knights 2. I'll get rid of this. I'll get rid of this. Let's go ahead and get rid of Virtual Cop 1. Oh, Sonic Jam, because that don't count. Virtual Cop 1. Uh, we'll get rid of that. I'm at, I'm at 15. Need to get rid of 5. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and get rid of that. Go ahead and get rid of that. Let's go ahead and get rid of Clockwork Knights. Let's go ahead and get rid of... Ooh, boy. Okay, let's get rid of Sonic R. Sorry, Sonic R. And I just need to get rid of one more. It's between Shining Force and Panzer Dragoon. Oh, there goes my timer. Boom. Okay, there it is. My top ten. I'll organize that in one second. At number ten, Panzer Dragoon. Which is weird, because I was like, I don't think I like this one. But I apparently liked it more than the other games. At number 9, Nights into Dreams. At number 8, Virtua Fighter 2. At number 7, Virtua Cop. At number 6, Alien Trilogy. At number 5, X-Men vs. Street Fighter. At number 4, Shinobi Legends. Number three is Lunacy. Number two is The House of the Dead. And number one is D. I really fucking recommend D.